Disclaimer. To comply with the California SB 553 training requirements under California Labor Code Section 6401.9, this course must also be supplemented with an opportunity for interactive questions and answers with the person knowledgeable about the employer's plan, along with material specific to the employer's workplace plan. Please consult with your employer. As we begin, we present a scenario that will help you reflect on how you define workplace violence. The scenario will be a confrontation with a disgruntled employee. As you watch, consider the question, is this a workplace violence situation? We will discuss this scenario at the end of the lesson. Ian has been working at the company for several years and believes he deserves a promotion. However, when Chris gets promoted instead, Ian becomes increasingly frustrated. One day, Ian confronts his manager, Lisa, in her office, expressing anger and disappointment at the situation. In September of 2023, Senate Bill SB 553 became law in California, effectively amending California Labor Code 6401.7 and adding a new section, Section 6401.9. In this course, we will break down the key components of this edition and discuss what it means for employers and employees in California. In simple terms, Section 6401.9 is a crucial addition to the Labor Code. It mandates that employers in California establish, implement, and uphold comprehensive workplace violence prevention plans across all work areas. It also outlines the specific requirements for these prevention plans. Unfortunately, Workplace violence is more common than many people realize. Therefore, it's essential that everyone understands what it entails and how to prevent it. In this lesson, we will define workplace violence, define threats and the four main types of workplace violence, and discuss potential behaviors that may lead to workplace violence incidents. Workplace violence is any act of violence or threat of violence that occurs in the workplace with a high likelihood of resulting in an injury psychological trauma, or stress. This includes the threat or use of force against an employee, as well as the threat or use of firearms or other dangerous weapons. It's important to note that actual injury is not required for an incident to be considered workplace violence. And it's crucial to remember that workplace violence does not include lawful acts of self-defense or defense of others. Next, let's define a threat. A threat is an oral or written statement or any behavioral or physical conduct that conveys or is perceived to convey an intent to cause harm or fear of physical harm with no legitimate purpose. Threats can be conveyed by oral or written statements, text messages, social media messages, or any other electronic messages or online post. Being vigilant and reporting these situations before they become violent can save lives. Safety is everyone's responsibility. There are four main types of workplace violence. Each type represents a distinct category of workplace violence and has its own unique characteristics and challenges. Type one violence occurs when a person enters the work site with no legitimate business reason and intends to commit a crime. This includes incidents such as robberies, burglaries, or assaults perpetrated by individuals who have no connection to the workplace other than their criminal intent. To help prevent type one violence, and protect staff and property, employers should implement security measures such as access controls, surveillance cameras, and employee training specific to this type of violence. Type 2 violence is a workplace violence directed at employees. Perpetrators can include customers, clients, vendors, patients, visitors, inmates, or students who become aggressive or violent while they're interacting with employees. To prevent type 2 violence, it's essential for employers to train their staff on work practice controls such as conflict resolution techniques and de-escalation strategies that will prepare them to manage potentially volatile situations. Additionally, having clear policies in place for handling disruptive individuals and providing support to employees who have been subjected to violence is crucial for maintaining a safe work environment. Type 3 violence is workplace violence against an employee by a present or former employee, supervisor, or manager. This type of violence may arise from conflicts between coworkers, disputes over promotions, 
disagreements about work-related matters, or even personal grievances spilling over into the workplace. This category of violence can manifest in various forms, such as verbal altercations, physical confrontations, harassments, or even sabotage of work equipment or projects. To prevent Type 3 violence from escalating, it's essential for employers to have clear policies and procedures in place to address workplace conflicts promptly and effectively. Type 4 violence is the final category of workplace violence. It is violence committed against an employee by someone who does not work there, but who has a personal relationship with an employee. Examples of perpetrators of this type of violence include family members, spouses, or significant others. Type 4 violence often stems from domestic disputes or personal conflicts that spill over into the workplace. It can be especially challenging for employers to address because the individuals involved may not be directly affiliated with the company. To help prevent Type 4 violence, employers should establish protocols for handling situations involving non-employee perpetrators, including notifying security personnel, implementing restraining orders if necessary, and providing support to the affected employee. Additionally, educating employees about the signs of domestic violence and encouraging them to report any concerning behavior can help mitigate the risk of Type 4 violence in the workplace. It's crucial for everyone in the workplace to be aware of and recognize potential behaviors that could escalate to workplace violence. Specific indicators include abrupt changes in behavior, inability to concentrate on the job, decreases in productivity, deteriorating personal hygiene, poor attendance, suicidal behavior, veiled threats, inappropriate comments, sabotage, aggressive outburst, comments on suicide, excessive displays of anger, obsessions, and the use of violence to project power and control others. By understanding and addressing the root causes of workplace violence, employers and employees can create a safer and more secure work environment for everyone. It's essential for employers and employees alike to be aware of these risks and respond appropriately to prevent workplace violence. Remember, safety is everyone's responsibility. Remember the scenario at the beginning of the lesson? Using what you've learned so far in the course, let's revisit the initial question. Do you think it demonstrated a workplace violence situation? The correct answer is A. The scenario didn't represent workplace violence unless Lisa felt personally threatened by Ian's anger. Lisa could apply de-escalation techniques when meeting with Ian. Reaching out to HR to discuss Ian's grievances and behavior would also be an appropriate solution. Did your initial answer change after learning more about workplace violence? But what if the conversation escalates? Watch what happens next. Ian seems to have raised his voice and made a physical effort to crumple and throw a paper ball. He also made threats about taking matters into his own hands. Do you feel this has now become a behavioral concern? Yes, this would be considered workplace violence. Based on what you learned in this lesson, which type of workplace violence would this situation be an example of? The correct answer is type three. Type three is committed between employees or former employees.